Hey 8th graders, today you guys will be doing a little CSI mystery solving based on melting point and this ties in with our last lesson that we did over 3.2 where we really focused in on molecular attraction. So your learning targets for today, I can identify the melting point of various solids and I can relate molecular attraction to melting point and all kinds of phase change. Okay. Alright, so here is a scenario for you guys. There has been a crime committed. A person has been poisoned and has died. All that was left as evidence at the scene of the crime was a mysterious fine white powder. Several suspects were attained, all carrying different bags of fine white powder suspected to be different poisons. Use the melting point of the eight different powders to identify which substance and which suspect is the murderer. But beware, the culprit could be sitting right next to you. Bum, bum, bum. All right. So what you guys are going to do and what kind of I already did in class or the kids in class are going to do is they're going to make four melting cones. So if you guys look on the next slide, you guys will see how to make the melting cones. And then when you guys watch the video, you'll also see those melting cones um, and how they work. Add a small scoop of the four assigned substances to each. You will be paired with another group testing the other four substances and we'll share data with them. Once all four of your cones are prepared and filled, bring them up to me and test the melting point. Record your data and observations in the table. So, obviously you guys won't be able to do this in class, but you guys will see the video uh, two slides from now where you guys will be able to collect your own data based on the observations I kind of point out to you guys, including how long it takes for the substances to melt, if they melt at all, and then just some little senses, observations that I made, like smell, stuff like that, appearance, okay? If the powder melts within the first five seconds, it has a low melting point, so it didn't take much energy at all to melt it. You guys can also kind of relate that to molecular attraction. And again, I always kind of like to touch back to the magnetic marbles. Um, if you guys think of that example, um, Think of how much energy you guys need to separate magnetic marbles based on how strong that magnetism is or that magnetic force. Okay, it's similar to molecular, molecular attraction. If you guys have that stronger molecular attraction, you're going to need a lot more energy to separate the marbles from each other or the molecules in this case and their freedom of movement. So if the substance does not melt after five seconds and it has a high melting point, again, you're looking at that strong molecular attraction. Be careful to distinguish what melts and what burns. Okay, so you guys will kind of use that burning factor also as one of your observations for your samples. Okay, so this is how you guys make the melting cones. So I take a little piece of tin foil, I wrap it around my finger, and then I twist the end, and that's going to be my little melting cone. Um, inside of that, I'll put my eight different substances as well as my unknown substance, and then each of those I will heat up over a Bunsen burner. All right, so for you guys to collect your data, you need to right-click and open this link. It looks a little something like this. Um, these are my first four substances I do, and then after I finish those, I go on to the next four substances, and then the final unknown substance, which was the substance used to poison the victim. Okay? So in your data table, as you guys watch that video, you guys will need to record, uh, record whether the substance has a high or low melting point. And then any observations that I kind of talk about in the video. Again, this is probably one of the harder labs I've had to do for you guys because a lot of what comes out of that is a visual thing that's hard for you guys to see um, what's happening in that little cone on the little video and then also just not being able to have that like smell, sound, stuff like that. It's just really hard to hear. Some of them crackle, some of them you can hear melting and bubbling. So those kinds of things I try to do the best I could to describe them to you guys. Um, and then finally, once you guys have that, I will make one more melting cone and put your guys' poison in it that was used to kill the victim. And then I will boil that. In this case, you guys can just write unknown A, okay, um, as I did two different unknowns in class, so the whole class wasn't trying to figure out the same unknown. And then talk about its melting point and any observations you see. So then based on melting point alone... Uh, which ones don't match the melting point? So maybe the melting point was high, so you guys would cross out all the ones with low melting points or vice versa. Okay, so cross out the ones that are definitely innocent based on melting point alone. And then for the next one, you guys are going to look at your observations to kind of help you narrow it down. All right, this one had, you know, these several had low melting points, so which ones kind of match the observations? So you guys will narrow it down to your one person that you think did it, and then you guys will use data from your lab to explain your conclusion. Okay, 
Then you guys have these questions to answer. What is melting point? I want your words, not the internet's words. At this point, you guys know what the melting point is, okay? Do substances with a low melting point need less energy or more energy to change phase? And then do substances with a high melting point need less energy or more energy to change phase? In this case, to melt. Okay, based on the melting point data you collected, which substances have higher molecular attraction? Circle all that apply and explain your choices. Okay, why did you choose those? Based on the melting point data you collected, which substances have a lower molecular attraction? Again, if it helps you think of that example of the magnetic marbles. Okay, which ones need more energy? Which ones need less energy? Okay, how does molecular attraction or attractive forces change that? Okay, and then finally, the unknown suspect or substance in this lab were all common household items like salt, borax, etc. If you were doing this lab in a typical manner, like I didn't make it into some kind of crime scene, and you guys were just asked to identify an unknown substance based on melting point, okay, uh, and not as a crime scene scenario, why would we not be able to test a substance like vegetable oil or water for their melting point in the same matter as we did the nine substances from today's lab? So think about what's different about something like water or vegetable oil than the nine um, substances you guys tested and how melting point ties into that. Okay, and then how would the molecular attraction of vegetable oil or water compare to the nine substances we tested today? And hopefully you guys have cracked the case. Now go ahead and hand it in, and I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.